Pro-Life Talk. Real world answers. This is Life Report. Welcome to Life Report. We're back on a two-part parter here. I'm Liz Goddard. <laughs> two-part parter. <laughs> I'm we Liz like Goddard. to do that. Because it was twice. My, she said it twice. With my wonderful friends, Josh Brom and Andrew Nimi, who will not stoop so low as to make fun of me when I stutter. Never. <laughs> anyway, we have had a wonderful episode talking about the 180 movie, and we had to take it to a part two. Um, our first episode, we talked a lot about the things we liked about the film. Right. Mm -hmm. um, short film, we really enjoyed. I know I really enjoyed, especially the start of the film and how it focused at first on the Holocaust mm -hmm. and kind of informing people and walking them through this process of um, learning, you know, talking to them about thought experience. What would you have done in mm -hmm. these situations yeah. before you even get to the issue of abortion? We, we all thought that that had been done well. Um, and we liked a lot how abortion was portrayed not only as um, murdering an unborn child, but specifically as a human rights issue to relate it to the Holocaust. And, and that was, was portrayed very well and in a different way than we usually see it presented. Yeah, it wasn't just about yeah. reducing abortions. It was about yeah. this is a human rights issue and it should even change how you vote. Yeah, so that was presented well. Now, we did have some differing opinions on the style mm -hmm. that was used, and we kind of left off in some of our, our different opinions of how the film was enacted and, and whether or not the change of these people's minds, the 180 that they took, would yeah. be a lasting change. So kind of picking up where we left off on mm -hmm. some of those things that we disagreed with um, and some of those things that we didn't particularly see as strong points of this film um, looking specifically at the style, I think there were a couple things we were wrapping up about the the whether or not that's an effective means, the, right. the short-pointed question and answer, whether or not that was something that was effective with the well, film. Well, I, mean, I think we all kind of agreed that there was definitely people that turned 180. Like, sure. Like, that was, sure. that was a result of it. And it was really, you know, is that – was that result then – is that something that's going to last? Is it something uh -huh. because, you know, right. like, like we, we had talked about, was it something that maybe they felt tricked into or something that right. kind of caught them off guard because of how, right. you know, how, how quickly Ray keeps going back to questions and has a, kind of pins them down to kind of, you know, really think about where they are right then and on the spot with a the camera there. Right. Was, did, that, did that make a lasting impression or not? Right. So, so the reason that I think the main reason that I'm concerned that it possibly would not have the same lasting impression mm -hmm. that it seemed like it would if you just take the movie and just be like, okay, and that's like the end of the story. Right. Uh, th I think the, the main reason would be something, and, and once again, as Scott Klusendorf made this point at ProLifeTraining.com, there's a distinction between shouting a conclusion and establishing one. And now, a lot of times Ray Comfort yeah, is... what do you mean by that? Okay, well, what, well, what Ray Comfort did a lot of times, especially when he would, he would ask this question... Uh, and let me just make sure I get it right. It's okay to kill a baby in the womb when, you know, dot, dot, dot. Right. And he'd right. make and an answer them question. fill in the blank or come up with a right. justification. And everyone would always be like really caught off guard on right. that question. Well, because it's a very tough and pointed question. Right. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's okay it's, to kill a baby in not, the womb but when. But see, it's not just a pointed question, though. Like, here's my problem is he's actually begging the question. Begging the question is, is an informal fallacy that means you're, you're assuming what you're, what you're trying to prove. And any clever pro-choice person would have responded, I don't accept your premise. I don't think it's a baby. Okay, but but right before so he's, that, he's inserted. I don't think he did that. I yeah, don't think I, he did that I because right that. before okay, that, why? he asked them, "Do you think it's so? Do you think it's a baby in the womb?" Um, he he asked them that. Think at so. least a, a couple of no. them. He asked them, "Do you or so you he just asked, said he, he, it's he, a baby, or you just said it's a child?" He asked if they value human life. He never established well, I, that the unborn in the womb is human life, except on the on the DVD. There's a part where he steps away from the on the street interviews and he talks about a developing six week child and he shows a picture and says that they've got a heartbeat and ears and arms or something like that. Yeah. But he but he doesn't unless it's cut out of the footage. He never establishes that the unborn is well, a human being I, and he just assumes it and and skips that step. I, I see what you well, I But see. I do know in one of the videos that he doesn't use baby, he uses child because that's yeah, what the, that that's what the, the girl referred to. He so took I what she said and I don't think in. that that that's begging the question because begging the question is when it's, you know, you, you've, you've built your argument based off of... An assumption. An, an, an assumption. And while you can, you know, make the... You can say that, that he's assuming that, at this point, he's had them talking about human life. And mm -hmm. he's definitely had them... Again, I think talking about the type of people that were that he is conversing with here, 
he's got them to the point where this is now a human rights issue. So I don't think that he's necessarily jumped mm-hmm. over different, you know, kind of leap too far ahead because they've established that it's a human rights issue. And if it is a human in the womb, is it ever okay to kill that human? Yeah, so here's why. I, here's the reason I disagree, Andrew. I don't think he ever established that. He, he said it's a human rights issue. He didn't establish that. Jumping from killing the Jews for bad reasons to killing the unborn for those same reasons is not— there, there's more that needs to happen there because anyone why? else— Because the entire question that we need to be asking here is, are the unborn human? That's what we train people to do. That's the now, enti- 90, Hold on. 96% of conversations on this issue, mm-hmm. uh, generally speaking, are going to be about this question, are the unborn human beings like you and me? That's, that's almost all the conversation and he didn't he didn't take that usual approach and part well, he never of it, even established but it he in a way i think he did it in a sense that worked i don't think he really um committed a fallacy that was deceitful to the people he was working with he took most of them used baby or child or had accepted his use of baby or child to describe the unborn that wording um, now, he did. He definitely skipped a step, but I think he did it on purpose. Instead of saying, do you believe that that, that unborn baby um, that you referred to as a baby or a child is the same as um, a, a Jew in, in Germany? Instead of saying that, he did assume it. I, I agree. When he gave him the question, you know, right. uh, it's okay to kill a baby in the womb when, you know, there was and it worked with them. Like that. It worked. Which, which is where, again, I think when you said you're 96%, I think some of these could very well fall into that 4% because this isn't the types of conversations you're usually going to have on, you know, with someone on abortion. Usually there's going to be a lot of back and forth and it, your, your discussion is laid out as a discussion on abortion, where this one was very much just sort of, hey, can I ask you some questions? And who, I mean, he starts off, it looks like very it's a bit blatantly. of showmanship to it, I think. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's very much, you know, he starts off with who's Adolf Hitler? How is starting that question, you know, if someone on the street and comes and asks you, you know, what do you think of Fidel Castro? You're not thinking they're going to end up talking about something totally, you know, five right. steps down the road. He wears right. those hats. So let, let me just clarify. Uh, uh, what I meant by the 96%, I mean, when, when mm-hmm. we, of all the conversations I've had with pro-choice people, roughly 96% of them have revolved around the question of personhood. Are the unborn right. full human beings? About 1% has been about whether the unborn are either alive or of the human species. And about 3% have been about bodily rights. I'm not saying like... He doesn't spend time times, establishing personhood. No, no, no. He, he doesn't. And so, and, this is the, and so here's my concern. Is he had people mm. that kind of fell for it or kind of, you know, had a little bit, you know, they kind of answered it, but they they allowed him to kind of set up this premise that was never established. And as soon as they walk away and they hear virtually any pro-choice argument that the unborn is not a person, they might suddenly think, oh, wait, well, I'm definitely against killing Jews, but wait a minute, but that's not like the unborn, like Ray was saying, because I don't think they're persons. All right. Then question for you. Does that does that mean that you think that this is not effective? I don't think that doing that, that asking that question is the best way to persuade a persuasive should, person long term. Does that mean it shouldn't be done? To asking the question, is okay to kill a baby in the womb when? No, I mean, if, if you if you think that this is skipping that step, thorough. is it okay to skip the step of establishing um, that the unborn is as human? And as much of a person as the Jew, skipping that step, I'm and I'm inclined to start agreeing with Josh well, on this. Well, I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but I think in the situation, the fact that this is all based off—it's not based off of a personhood argument; it's based off of a human rights argument. In, in that but sense, embedded in that has to be the personhood idea. If it's not a person, it's not a human, human. It's not a human rights thing. Then okay, but if again, if you're looking at at a a simple person, I will say that, which we had talked about before, right. but that maybe that's not even an issue to them. Maybe they haven't thought that deep. And to them, like just like when you, you know, when you see, if you have a young child that sees pictures of an aborted fetus, they know that's a person. Right. It's working off of the human assumption that people know in their heart. Correct. They, they, or they, they have they, an innate knowledge. They haven't built up a maybe resistance when they're young. to that. Well, no, okay. Well, there, no, that's a point. There I, is if, a if resistance they, built. Yeah, if they haven't built up a resistance to deny themselves the reality that it, and the, you know, that they've tricked themselves into thinking that this is not a human, then I don't think it's wrong to, 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 and I won't say make that assumption. I will say to not, like, divert into you know conversation about the personhood of the unborn. So I think that the the step that he skipped because he set up you know with them before. Human life is valuable. He right. set up that premise. Yes. He skips the unborn child is human. Right. 
But then again, most people don't argue that the unborn is not human. Well, he, they argue when they become valuable or they, they're human. That's what he but. meant. But, but when, when he was saying mm-hmm. when, you, when, when you talk so about a human rights up. issue, he's, you're not just talking about species. You're talking about the assumption is a valuable human being like you and right. me. And I think what he was trying to do with that question, it's OK to kill a baby in the womb when mm-hmm. is to ask them in a sense he was asking them to... What are your exceptions? Right. I, I agree. But that's that's the problem is it's a little bit of an ambush because if they're not clever, yeah. then they're going to realize he just basically set, you know, put a huge premise in there that has not been established or agreed to. And if they just kind of go with it, fine. That kind of works a great, great for the movie. But I'm concerned that's not right. going to work with very many people who are a little bit more clever than the people that he interviewed. Well, I don't speech. think it's going to prepare them to have an answer for any pro-choice person that they run into after that who says but it's just a clump of cells it's not going to prepare them to answer that and to stick with their newfound pro-life belief which is probably the biggest problem i have with ray comfort's style Mm -hmm. um, of these quick conversations and i'm going to take you through the ten commandments and you're going to pray a prayer um, is that then you're you're sending them back out into the environment that they've been in unless, and I'm sure at some point he does, you just don't see in the videos, yeah. um, but unless you're connecting them with a church or in this case, unless you're connecting them with some better training I for their pro-life beliefs. Just so you know, I think he does do that. Right. If you're not doing that, then you're going to send them right back into these arguments without any defense. Now, now then if he does do that, then why is there a problem with with you know shouting the conclusion you know like if it is if it's not if he's not just here man on the street and he ends it like okay i'm done with my video i'm going to leave if he does connect them with more education if he does you know go back to to fill in those gaps that that we agree that he didn't you know thoroughly cover Mm -hmm. then does that mean that his way is not effective because because what what if you come to if if you come to someone on the street you know especially someone you know like there was the the guy that was the the neo-nazi that's that starts out yelling and screaming stuff like that if you come in and try having these deep you know this deep argument with him, you're going to lose him instantly. There's going to be no connection to that because he doesn't want to have that conversation on abortion. You got him there because you were talking about Adolf Hitler. Sure, and and, and right. I'm fine, and fine with how he did that. that was good. I don't think he leaves them with like more pro-life arguments. I don't think he gives them like Randy Alcorn's book or something like that. When he, I think he gives them like a New Testament or something like that, and maybe a card that has information about being a new Christian. That's all I'm saying. I think that he does. Um, I'm sure there's some follow. We, we talked about that. We we actually did. We did an episode a while back. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we talking about the I, I was on a plane with a guy and we got mm-hmm. into a pro-life conversation right. and then I was kind of I, I, he went to try to make a really good argument but then he started he started petering out and I was kind of helping him along to make sure he kept on establishing the right argument so then I could re- refute it and the whole purpose of that was so that later when he goes and hears those good arguments right. he's he's not going to just be like oh well I guess not I, I, I am pro choice but like, oh no wait we already talked about that one and right. Josh really def- refuted it in like three different ways like that's what I want to have. I want to see the long term effects, not just a real quick, let's see how fast I can get someone to become pro-life. And that's my concern about this movie. I think you're right in that if you spend more time and you walk through without skipping that step, um, that you will have a stronger defense for that person in their newfound pro-life beliefs. Um, But I do believe that that step um, is something that most people innately know. And in a sense, you, that you, when you get most people that come by, they know that it's human, and most of them know that it's a baby, and then they come up with an exception. Well, at three weeks or at three months, or um, it's a baby, but are you are you suggesting? Just so I want to understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Liz, it, it sounds to me like you're suggesting that most pro-choice people just innately know that the unborn is a person, even in the first trimester. Is that not what a you're, person? I'm saying innately. When you say baby, what do you, what do you mean then? Innately, I think most people, and I wouldn't necessarily say most pro-choice people, maybe most uh, kind of default pro-choice people, know that it's a human. And many, and I would say a lot of people that come to like displays on college campuses will say it's a baby. And that you saw that come out in the film. Yeah. And he said, you know, do you think do you think it's a baby in the womb? And they're like, yeah. But, you know, mother's right supersedes or um, it's 
well at this age or they start drawing conclusions. So I think innately most people know that it's human. And if they've already decided that human life is valuable, they were making the connection. Yeah, I, I just had they a really, were making it. really different experience talking with pro-choice people for the last 10 years. I've found that <laughs> most people think that it's not a baby in the way that we mean it. When we not, say valuable not human. Not in a person way. And that's where he was making the connection with Okay, but we're talking um, about Nazis. personhood. We're not just talking about species. There's nowhere we're raised just talking about species. When he says human rights, he means but person. But you're making that's the assumption that, that that's what the, that what Ray was intending and what the person was feeling. I mean, when he says baby, yeah, I think when he, when he connects the Jews being killed, which are human persons, mm-hmm. to babies in the womb, and the assumption is that it's persons too. So I don't I don't think I'm assuming anything. I think it just that's what yeah. they're talking about. I think it just skipped the step, and I don't think that's going to be as fruitful long term. And I don't, I agree, it's not going to be as yeah. fruitful long term. But it worked. People got it. People innately when he went, took the leap of baby in the womb, same idea as Jew in Germany. It worked they with got those it. people. Yes, they got it. But that's my and concern. Think, is it worked with only those people? I think uh, it works with a lot of people. But again, I think when they go back into their environment and somebody throws them the it's a lump of cells or something like that, right. they're going to be weak. Right. So I agree. But I, I think it worked out in that sense. Mm-hmm. Next. <laughs> and we could do this for 10 more minutes or oh, we could oh, talk I about know. a few more points. Josh so. could go with a bunch of these. Uh, one of the things, though, in that same segment yeah, um, that he kind of, when he had mentioned it's okay to kill the baby in the womb when, and they'd kind of done some of that, he cut to this um, um, kind of explanation of how he was coming up with the unborn as human and jumped to this six-week baby right. um, that he'd gotten from... I think it said EHD was the company. Yeah. I believe you, you'd mentioned e- that. EHD.org is his, yeah. his foot. Well, it's his, 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 his embryoscopy foot. His National his, Geographic has used mm-hmm. it. And my kind of my issue I took with that um, that I thought was kind of poor was when he cut to that and he said, you know, here's a picture of a six-week baby in the womb. You can clearly see their hands and fingers and heart beating right. cut back to the um, to the conversation. It's, it's almost like maybe they realized he was skipping a step and and ins- maybe inserted this step into the for the sake of everyone else. And if you he, know, and if that's the case, then I'm almost like I probably would have agreed but, with but, the decision. But what I didn't like is just just pointing out that look, hands, feet, heartbeat. That's not what the qualifications of being human are, right. or what the qualifications of being living are, or valuable or valuable. Yeah. It was kind of too surface level. Yeah. For my for my simplistic. Taste. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. I think we I agree. We, all, we can all agree that mm-hmm. that that aspect of it wasn't. But that again, that wasn't the intent of what his discussion was. It was to relate the, the human rights aspect of it. Right. I still think it was probably the lowest yeah. point of the show for yeah. me. Yeah. In that perspective. Um, I thought one of the things uh, that that I, I, I felt like was skipped was the distinction between voting for pro-life candidates and voting pro-life. We're, we could do a whole debate about mm. like voting principles right now. I was telling Liz, we in fact, I was thinking, I know we're having let's a show do a whole debate this. about this. <laughs> but we just booked Scott Klusendorf to come, uh-huh. and he's going to do an entire episode in the studio, kind of doing a little bit of a debate with with Jonathan Keller on the idea of voting principles. So is, is kind of the voting party versus always vote for okay. the pro-life but, guy. But I'm curious um, what your take is on this, because I thought he did a good job of actually pointing out so are you gonna? So you know, it sounds like you changed your position on abortion. Yeah, so that that are was, you gonna vote, was, vote different? That was now? a strength of the video. Was him bringing up the? Voting. He said, "Are you gonna vote pro life now?" And yeah. and I think voting pro life is not a very is not just a super simple just vote for the pro life guy. I think sometimes that means voting for the pro life party. But I think more than that, for the way that I took out of the video, is that these people are going now going to use that in a social aspect of their mind. Is that now that's going to play into, you know. Where, where they stand socially mm-hmm. and that's where mm-hmm. I think it was a very powerful tool was that he really challenged them like if this is such a big issue to you this is a human right issue mm-hmm. of the magnitude of it being a genocide right. then is that going to affect the way that you view social change that you right. view your society right and I think that's a that was a huge thing that completely he did. agree right completely and a lot agree. of people don't make that association when you're talking about abortion but it kind of left you with the idea of oh wow people voted Hitler into power correct um, I think he actually cut to Hitler when he was talking about voting it's like people voted him into power he did nothing illegal right. he and, had the authority of the German people right. behind him um, and so that really um, really, play, I thought he did great with showing 
the at least vote for it. I don't know if he had time to get into some of the specifics on how do you vote pro-life. Yeah, and then also in regards to, I think, why that was there was because he was using that when he was talking about, you know, all all the Germans stood by during this. Hmm. Are you going to stand by? Are you going right. to do something? Are you going to vote? Right. And that's yeah. where I, I love think, that. I'm, yeah. Correct. And so that's where right. I think that that was used valuably because it made the people, it made him kind of say to the people, okay, you now think this, this is, is on wrong. You. you think that this is, you know, a genocide. This is something that's that's wrong with our society. Yeah. Are you going to have do anything socially to respond to it? There was a really powerful part of the film. I thought it was one of the best parts. One of the younger gals um, that he was talking to um, in in the uh, thought experiment involving the bulldozer. Um, she kind of said, you know, I think I would do it because I would bury these Jews alive because, you know, what good would it do for me not to do it? I'm just going to die. It takes right. more than you know, what good is one person going to do? It was like a script. What good is one person going to do? You needed everyone to rise up. You needed everyone to do and what was right. Have, yeah, risen up and, against. you know, and Ray challenged her. Well, maybe everyone, the collective is made up of individuals making the right choice right and i think that leads directly into voting because a lot of people feel the same way it should it's one that's vote. not how everybody voted it's... in 2008 though <laughs> <laughs> and there are a lot of pro-life people voted i think wrong but in again, 2008 I... but again i think that Can kind of plays you? into again this sort of sampling of people we got if we look at that mm-hmm. as you know i was kind of perplexed by you know how results ended in 2008 but at the same time that's that's the reality of the society we're living in. Right. And if right. that's the type of people that we need to that we need to, you know, help invoke social change, right. then that's really at some point is the type of level that we need to meet them at, the type of level where where Ray meets them at because it's not going to be, you know, always having the the situation or the individual, you know, that that's going to want to to go deep with us and go to, you know, really want to to our, to go through all the issues like you know like the guy you had on the, on the airplane. Right. I mean, th- th- right. that to me is an Somebody's is an exception, that. and that those are valuable because you can get a strong ally, but you also need you know you need the general public, and I think that's where this video is can be useful is because if someone in the general public watches it, I think it can really change. Their, their mindset on it. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, my response to that is, I, I, I have found that, in my personal experience, that generally speaking, people, whether pro life or pro choice, prefer a conversation where they don't feel ambushed and where they feel like yeah. you're really actively, truly listening to them, listening the way you, that you wish your parents had listened to you, like really listening and letting them talk, because everyone loves to hear themselves talk, uh, <laughs> yes, they and they do. feel like you're a great conversationalist. I feel like generally, I, 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 if if we're talking to pro-life advocates. So, you know, we're talking to people that might be thinking, okay, do right. I do the JFA way when I talk to people or do I do the Ray Comfort way? And my personal view is that generally speaking, it would be better off taking a, a, a slow, a more slow-paced approach where you're really listening. Uh, and if the person doesn't have time to do the entire debate, if they don't have two hours to go through all the issues, it's fine. Get right. their email address, get their Facebook or whatever, and see if you can continue the conversation later. If it's a friend, you can meet them for Starbucks once a month for two years years, you know, and really go through it. It doesn't have to be, how can I get this person switched in 90 seconds? That should never I, be our goal. There is nothing yeah. I can say against that, because I can <laughs> agree yes. completely. Yes, we agree. I think we've established. What I'm, what I, awesome. But what I'm saying relates not to that sort of situation. Right. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's to the ones that, that don't want to have that conversation or right. don't think that way. Right. That, I mean, a lot of these people do, do not have a, any sort of of understanding or grounding as far as why they be, why they chose to be pro-choice, right? They're pro-choice by default in our society. It, exactly, and what, so whatever, walking you know, them through. Yeah, and so that's why I thought for that situation, which whether it's the minority, you know, an extreme minority or not, I think that that was a very valuable tool for that situation because a lot of people I know that would do that, they would never. I would I would say kind of email address. They're like. You know, no way. Like they, they don't want to have that conversation because when you lead with it, sometimes that becomes a big that becomes your biggest burden is that you're trying to break through with the abortion issue. And he did it without doing that. Again, not every time, not ideal, but effective in certain areas. I don't think most people have the ability to effectively and quickly take people 180 yeah. in a short amount of time. And it's probably not advisable, but... 
the steps that he used are easy enough that most people can follow them and add them to their toolbox of things to use when talking with someone. So take the, the concepts and apply them in conversation at whatever speed is comfortable to the person you're talking to. Um, I would just encourage people to remember to have a relational approach and it's not about winning or yes. turning yeah. someone. Yep. In and you a certain time. Yeah, and you shouldn't look for that, you know, the turning as your goal. It should be, you know, I mean, just like mm-hmm. with sharing the faith, you shouldn't be the one that's looking to, you know, to reap. You should be doing looking every opportunity, right. yeah, every opportunity you can. Same with something like like with sled. You're not, it's not necessarily the best the best tools to use, but it's something that you can use to bring up, you know, topic. Right. Right. And I think, it, you know, if there's anything that we can all take from this and give to everyone is. Take the ideas from this, add them to your toolbox of things you can use in conversation. We've gathered some good stuff about this. There's a lot we like about this film. Um, You know, the way it went forward, a lot of the strategies like talking about the Nazis and and comparing that um, and those those, uh, thought experiments to this issue is something that we can use in conversation. So that's good to apply. I know that Josh wants to talk a little bit. Um, How should we be using this? That that should be kind mm-hmm. of here's the application, and I, so I've got a couple of thoughts. I think pro-lifers should show it. I think I think show it to both mm-hmm. pro-life and pro-choice people. If there's things that you didn't like in it, uh, you can use that as common ground. Hey, yeah. maybe you didn't like how he begged the question all the time, but I don't like that either. And let's talk about it. Let's find the common ground kind of thing, um, and tell us what you think. Go on our Facebook, yeah. Facebook.com/slash/pro-life podcast. You can tell us what you thought. Um, the only thing I would say don't is use as an example of exactly how you got to talk <laughs> no. to pro-choice people. No, and campuses. I think I think we've covered that. My, oh, even though that I've had a lot of things to say about things I didn't like about this mm-hmm. film, I want to say overall, I'm glad it was made. Yeah. I no, really I appreciate that Ray Comfort made it. He's taking this issue seriously. Yes. Uh, and he is doing something. He has funded an entire film yeah. to try to end this thing. And it, it, he's doing a lot, a lot more than most people are. So overall, I'm glad it was made, even though I, nothing's perfect. Uh, and I don't, but I don't think we should let the perfect become the enemy of the good. It's a good thing. Um, just use it with caution. If you want to know more about Ray Comfort, Josh did do an interview with him that's available on our website as an extra. Our website's prolifepodcast.net. And um, make sure that if you haven't seen the movie already, go see it now, www.180movie.com, or look it up on YouTube. And check out our website, www.prolifepodcast.net. Check out the audio for this first show and for Josh's interview with Ray Comfort to get more information. Once again, this is Life Report. I'm Liz Goddard, and that's our show. You've been watching Life Report, pro-life talk, real world answers. Life Report is produced by Right to Life of Central California. Visit their website at fresnoprolife.org. 